So we talked about how your nervous system is formed, and in this video we're going to talk about the cells that compose your nervous system. So the cells that make up your nervous system, all right, cells of nervous system, is broken up into two groups. That will be the cells that make up your functional unit, which is your neurons, and then basically the second group is everything else. All right, everything else. These are your support cells support and the term for these support cells is glial these are your glial cells so we'll talk about the neurons first your neurons are your functional unit so these cells are the actual cells that receive signals and send signals so all right receive and send just a recap of their anatomy They receive signals through these projections called dendrites. So neurotransmitters hit these dendrites, they receive the signals, goes into the cell body, cell body, where it interprets it. Now your cell body has a lot of things, it has the nucleus, it has the rough endoplasmic reticulum, it has the ribosomes, it has all that good stuff. Just know that in neurons, we call the ribosomes mesal bodies. So don't let that terminolo terminology throw you off. And if the signal is strong enough and the body interprets it and says it's strong enough, then they'll propagate that signal down into this long tube called the axon. The axon. Now the axon is something special. The axon is covered with this sheath. called myelin. And there are little spots that aren't covered called the nodes of Ranvier. And in these little nodes you have a ton of channels, so sodium channels. Why do you have such a complicated system in your axons? Well by insulating these and making these little these little nodes, these spots where there are a lot of sodium channels, then the signal can kind of jump from node to node. And that just helps the signal transmit faster and kind of keeps the signal strong. I'll just write keeps signal strong. It's able to kind of bounce around instead of just kind of slowly transmitting. It can bounce around. Sometimes they use fancy terminology. They might call it saltatory conduction basically conducting the signal through all these salt channels. They might say increase conduction. That just means increase conduction. They might say increase space constant. What does space constant mean? That's a cool term. Space constant just means how far the signal can travel. And so if you have these little nodes, it can bounce and travel further. So those are just fancy terms meaning the same thing. All right, but that's just an important thing you need to know. So it has a lot of myelin on the axons. And that signal will travel down the axon Finally go to the axon terminal, aka the end of the axon, and release neurotransmitters. And the process starts all over again. So a dendrite on another neuron will pick up the neurotransmitters, transmit down the axon, out the axon terminal, etc., etc. Those are your neurons. That's how we transmit data. That's how our nervous system works. Now I just want to say your axons can get damaged, your nerves can get damaged. Unfortunately, the nervous tissue is permanent cells, so its regenerative capabilities aren't that good. However, there's one mechanism where your nerve cells will try and kind of keep as much integrity as it can. So if you have trauma and kind of basically destroy this axon, first off, that's very unfortunate. But again, you have a mechanism to try and keep as much neural tissue as possible. So the axon proximal to the damage, before the damage will contract and try, and try and save itself. And then the axon that's distal to the damage will just basically degenerate, okay? So at least it can save this portion of the cell body. We call this Wallerian degeneration. Wallerian degeneration. Just something you should be aware of. Okay, so those are your neurons. Let's talk about your support cells, your glial cells. Can't talk about support cells without talking about the cells that make the myelin. Those are, that's so important 
and neurons, all right? So we gotta talk about the cells that make the myelin. In the CNS, these are your oligodendrocytes. And if you look in the CNS, there's white matter, there's gray matter. The white matter, a lot of the white matter is made of these oligodendrocytes. And these cells will make the myelin of your CNS. And you should know that one oligodendrocyte, all right, oligo, this is your oligodendrocyte, is great at multitasking. So it can actually work on multiple neurons at the same time and make multiple myelin sheaths at the same time. That's pretty cool. So I'll just write one cell, multiple neurons. Great at multitasking. Now in your PNS, it's a little bit uh, less of a multitasker, we'll say. These are gonna be your Schwann cells. And these can only work one at a time. Schwann. So all right, one cell to one neuron. Very important you know that. So your Schwann cells aren't very good at multitasking. Some other support cells you can have. You can have microglial cells. This is a fancy name for a macrophage that's gone into your CNS. We said that macrophages, once they go into tissue, they get special names. Like if it's in your liver, we call those Kupfer cells. If it's in your skin, we call those longer hound cells. If it's in your brain, in your CNS, we call those microglial cells. So don't get confused with the terminology, it's just a macrophage. And they eat baddies, and if there's insults or damage or infections, then you can guess you get more microglial cells. Um, something you should know in HIV, HIV likes to affect these microglial cells, it fuse them. When we see fused macrophages, we call those giant cells, and there's no difference. So HIV can fuse them and cause these giant cells. Just something you should be aware of. And then last but not least, epidermal cells. We're gonna talk about the ventricular system in further videos, but the ventricular system is just basically this buoyant water balloon inside of your brain. And it's filled with CSF, cerebral spinal fluid. And the thing that makes that CSF is your epidermal cells. So I'll just write, makes CSF, and it lines your ventricular system. Keep that tucked away in the back of your mind. And if there's damage to your brain, if there's damage to your CNS, then all these support cells will kind of proliferate more. We call that gliosis, proliferating more to kind of, kind of help your CNS, yeah. Now you might be thinking, Aren't I missing a very, very important cell? This cell is so important, it gets its own special mention. So one of the most important glial cells is gonna be your astrocytes. Astrocytes. Astrocytes gets its name astro, meaning star, because it looks kind of star-like. Astrocytes do everything, and I mean everything. So if you have a question that says, what cells does this, and it's not, and it's not making myelin or being a macrophage or making CSF, then it's probably your astrocytes. So astrocytes do a ton of things. They're the things that hold glycogen for if you need you know, extra energy storage. There's the thing that metabolizes electrolytes. There's the things that kind of breaks down neurotransmitters. There's the things that make your blood brain barrier. Blood brain barrier. Now your astrocytes are so important, they have their own special protein. We call this protein GFAP or glial fibrillary acidic protein. And that's kind of the marker of astrocytes. Keep that in mind, we're gonna talk about it soon. So GFAP is the marker of astrocytes. So your astrocytes do a ton of things. Now, the biggest thing I wanna talk about today is gonna to be that blood-brain barrier. It makes the blood-brain barrier. Now what the heck is a blood-brain barrier? Your astrocytes will lock onto the blood vessels, the capillaries that go in your brain and allow the good things to go to your brain, but stop the bad things from going to your brain. So the good things are things like glucose, because we need that. Um, it also allows your hypothalamus, which releases a lot of hormones to get through because it needs to get into your blood. It needs to get input from your blood also, so it allows your hypothalamus to get through. Some things it can't control, however, are things that are nonpolar, lipid soluble. That's just physio, those things just diffuse easily through through anything, so it kind of diffuses through. But it, for the most part, allows the good things to go through and stops the bad things from going through. Things like infections, things like toxins. So your astrocytes lodge onto your capillaries and just kind of builds that barrier, that, bl that blood 
brain barrier or your BBB. If things do need to get through, they have to go through a ton of things. I mean, let's just look at your capillaries. If these are your endothelial cells of your capillaries, endothelial cells of your capillaries, and this we'll just say it's a baddie, a little toxin. If it wants to make it through your blood brain barrier, it has to go through a ton of layers. It has to go through the tight junctions of your endothelial cells. That's not easy. It has to go through your basement membrane. That's not easy. And it finally has to go through your foot processes of your astrocytes. That's not easy either. So it really makes this great blood brain barrier. And if you destroy that for whatever reason, if there's trauma or if there is an infection, then if you destroy that, then fluids just leak through. If it leaks into your brain, you get this really big bad edema. So I'll just write, if your blood brain barrier goes out, you get edema. That just makes sense. Now, now you should know there's an area, a very important area that kind of lies outside of your blood brain barrier. And this is called your area postrema. Your area postrema is part of your medulla. I'll just write medulla. And it senses toxins and controls your vomiting. Why is that outside of your blood brain barrier? Because it needs to sense those toxins and once it senses those toxins, it causes you to throw up. It makes you want to throw up those toxins so it gets it out of your body. If it was in the blood brain barrier, then it would never sense those toxins and you just ingest a ton of toxins and you just die. So that's not good. And that's why the area postrema is outside of the blood brain barrier. Something important you should know. Now the blood brain barrier isn't unique. You have other barriers that kind of block your body off from the outside world. In men, we have it in our testes, so our Sertoli cells block our sperm from the outside world, so we don't auto-attack our sperm. In women, uh, if you're pregnant, then your placenta will block maternal blood from fetal blood. That way your antibodies in your blood won't attack your baby. Um, there's some debate whether or not there's actually a barrier there now, because there seems to be some sort of mixing between the two, but for your intents and purposes, there's a barrier, okay? So the maternal fetal barrier. So the blood-brain barrier isn't unique, but anytime we need a special kind of guard in men for our sperm and women to protect the baby, anytime we need a special guard, we have a special barrier. So the brain, we have the blood-brain barrier. Now, where do all these freaking cells come from? I mean, we talked about a ton of cells. Where do these cells even come from? Well, to answer that question, let's just go back to how we made the nervous system in the first place. Hopefully you remember, it was just a video ago. So we start with our three layers, our endoderm, our mesoderm, and our ectoderm. And we said that your ectoderm makes your neural tube. Yeah, but we said that the neural tube is quite a feat and it needs a helper. So your mesoderm will make that notochord, that little rod that, that kind of supports and helps the up the layer above it, the ectoderm, to make that neural tube. And so it says, thanks, buddy. And it comes together and forms that tube. And we said that there are cells at the top, or the crest, called crest cells, and those cells will branch off and form your PNS. So yeah, a ton of input from your mesoderm, a ton of input from your ectoderm. So, where do these cells come from? Your mesoderm will form your microglial cells. We call your microglial cells are just macrophages, and macrophages come from bone marrow mesenchymes. So that's just from your mesoderm. Your neural crest forms your PNS and also forms your Schwann cells. And that shouldn't be a surprise because it's your Schwann cells that myelinate your PNS. So they gotta go together. And then your ectoderm, which makes your neural tube. Your neuroectoderm forms everything else. Hopefully that's simple enough to remember. That's the cells of your nervous system. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.